Yo, welcome to a special edition of the Speaker Giga Podcast. And I'm your host, Steve O. Steve. And I'm here with my partner, Tommy T. And G's absent today. But he'll be back. He's the silent G for the day, like in lasagna. But yeah, I put that there. I did. <laughs> but we got a special, special, special Mother's Day edition today. And not only that, we got some special guests in the building from a new podcast that's coming out, which is called Mother's Milk. So without further ado, y'all get ready for that. Of course, we're bringing y'all what's in your speakers. And we're going to also be bringing y'all the daily news as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. So if y'all don't know who these two lovely ladies are on the podcast, if you're looking on YouTube, and by the way, if you're on YouTube, there's this little bell thing there. <laughs> it's somewhere over here somewhere. Push it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. very easy to do. Uh, make sure you subscribe. And then if you find us on any of your favorite podcast platforms, please make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss anything we got going. Um, also, check out the review. Tommy T did a review on MK. Uh, I was oh, yeah. about to say MK2, but it it's was, just regular Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Y'all make sure y'all go check that out on the 3M, pa- 3M page on YouTube. Yes, sir. And without further ado, we got two guests. None other than Artika. A Town. Yeah. A Town. Is it what? A Town. Artika Town. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was no. just so excited. I've been waiting <laughs> on this day for a very long time. Awkward. Well, she's here now. She's here now. And, and on Speaker Geek is not August Love Story. I know it. I Let's know discuss. It. I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then we got. The other host of Mother's Milk. And let's discuss when we do record them. <laughs> Crystal. Crystal's in the building. Good to see everyone. Good to see you. So, man, we got a we got a action packed episode. Gonna be a little shorter than normal. So I know some of y'all like that. But other than that, we're gonna get it rolling. So since G ain't here today, he ain't in the building. He's silent like the G in lasagna today. I guess we're just going to kick off what's in your speakers, man. Let's do it. So, without further ado, we're going to let our ladies go first because we are gentlemen. You understand? Uh-huh. Gentlemen. Some of y'all need some practice. Chivalry is not dead, folks. Open the door for a lady. <laughs> Something. Good God. Uh, we're going to let the ladies go first. So, who, who? let me see. Should I go alphabetical order? That means Artika will go first. <laughs> That's fine. I'm used to being at the top. If you went alphabetical by first or last name, I would be ahead of Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess for this week, I have only really been listening to music through Tommy. So he's been playing, um, at least around me, a lot of old school. So we have been listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire, the Commodores. Hmm. Um, I want to say the stylistics was thrown in there a little bit. He's just been a uh, old school to his little soul. Mm-hmm. So. Me and the kid have gotcha. been bopping to some old school with him. Okay. Bopping. Okay. And Sesame Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sesame, Sesame Street has got some bangers, man. <laughs> kids. They got some bangers, some 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 classic stuff, man, that you remember. Mm-hmm. They hey, some of their new stuff is hitting too. Yeah. yeah. With a lot of their newer guests they be having on there. Um but all right, shoot. There we go. That, that ain't bad. I guess when your spouse on there, it's kind of hard to have your own list. I kind of like share a list. Yeah. Uh, but we got Crystal now. She's going to have her own list because it's just her. <laughs> so what's, well, been, on, what's been in your speakers? <laughs> yeah. So what's been on my speakers lately? Um, I'm the same as Tommy and Artika. I'm reeling off of the last verses with um, Ronald Isley. And the Isley Brothers and Earth, Wind, and Fire. So that has been in my speaker um, here lately. Um, just jamming to those old school tunes. And then, of course, staple is Beyonce. I've been, I'm still jamming to Beyonce Homecoming. That is like constant every week. I'm yeah. always jamming to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no wrong with some here. Queen Bee. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, what's, your favorite, what's your favorite Isley Brothers song? Oh gosh, I'm more on the earth, wind, and fire side, I must say. Um, 
<laughs> but let me just say this for Earth, Wind, and Fire, my favorite song is Serpentine Fire. So love that one. Nice. That's okay. Cool. okay. Cool. Cool. All right, Tommy. Is it my turn yet? Yeah, just go for it. <laughs> I got a. I don't have a scroll like you do, but I got a few a few hits in there. Okay. Like my wife said, um, you know, we've been listening to old school stuff, man. Um, <laughs> we listened to uh, EU doing the the butt mm-hmm. uh, to see to, <laughs> like because my daughter she dances to this stuff, man. It'd be hilarious. Mm-hmm. She loves music, so she starts dancing. It doesn't matter what she hears; she just starts dancing. So we was listening to that. Um, Gucci came out with a song called Shit Crazy featuring mm. Big 30. Check that out. Um, 21 Savage came out with a song called Spiral. That was okay. Um, let's see. Young Dolph had a song, Tatted. Um, DJ Khaled had an album come out, Khaled Khaled. That was cool. Um, let's see. Went down a rabbit hole of 2000 hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> so we listening to um, like Soldier Boy. Uh, what's it? Superman. Crank that. Yeah. Crank that. Um, <laughs> that's it. Uh, Laffy Taffy. Um, well, that's a good one. Right. right. We just, I was just trying to see if she would dance to it. <laughs> Wish she had a little bop to it, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what else was it? Uh, Childish Gambino, um, Awaken My Love. Check that album out again. Shelly, FKA Drum. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see, The Mac by Akeem Ali. I know that's one of, uh, like, dude, like, on the uh, 80, 80 Vibe show, like, he killed it. Like, I've been on dude for, like, a year now. Um, I know Greg, Greg like him a lot, too. Um, checked out that Money Bag Yo album again. Um, album by Moray Street Sermons. Fire. <laughs> if you haven't heard it, go check it out. Um, Kid and Play, actually. Too Hype. Listen to their album. Um, Solange, a seat at the table, check that one out again. And then I started listening to Mother's Day songs like Tupac, Dear Mama, um, Kanye West, Hey mm-hmm. Mama. Um, Drake had a song, um, what's the name of it? <laughs> God, Lee, what's the name of Drake's song? I can't remember what. The, oh, Look What You Done. Listen to that. So that's where uh, my music has led me this week, man. Is look what you done a Mother's Day song? I mean, he talks about his mom. Oh, he talks about his mom, yeah. Oh, man, That's that probably song, one of my so. favorite songs from Drake by far, actually. What? Uh, very personal. Good yeah. song. Yeah. That I really enjoy it from him. So. I always feel awkward when Drake comes up because I always call it light skin love songs. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. <laughs> People talk light about Drake, I'm light. like, eh, I'm not really into Drake like that. <laughs> yeah. It's Steve's only <laughs> no, no. So I'm with you with that. It's the <laughs> That's what it is. There you go. See, there it is. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's your list. That, that yeah, was pretty long. That's that was that's long, that man. long, man. I was like, dang, yeah. you're still scrolling. Stop. Yeah, you're stop. Stop. Y'all need to stop it. That's yeah, my first scrolling. list. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. You're welcome. Um, so I guess I'll bring us up on the rear here. Um, of course, still listen to that money bag, uh, against this pain album. And man, every time I listen to it, it's another song that I really like a lot. Uh, so I'm still, still bopping it out a lot. Uh, man, Larry June numbers. Mm. So, um, man, I listen to more and more Larry June and the more I listen, the more, I just really, really enjoy Larry June. But I haven't heard this album, and I saw it, and I was like, man, I don't want to listen to some Larry June. So I jumped on this Larry June album called Numbers. Uh, probably one of the dopest album covers I've seen in a while with this uh, Mustang on these five stars on here. Uh, but, yeah, definitely check out that Larry June. Larry June is going in. Unshakable may be my song that I really like the most on there. But, man, there's so much on here. Like that Trap Larry. Trap Larry is hitting. Like, yeah. just period. Uh, so go definitely check out Larry June and everything else he done had coming uh, since then. Uh, from there, I listened to some Freddie Gibbs. Freddie Gibbs, and I know I'm finna butcher this last name. <laughs> Not last name, but this other name on here. But it's Freddie Gibbs and Mad 
Mad Lib. Is it Mad Lib? Yeah. That might be it. M A D L I B. Yeah. So that's uh, it. If, if you're listening, I butcher your name. My bad, bro. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, Panata. But it's the deluxe edition. So it's like really, really long. But it's Freddie Gibbs giving you Freddie Gibbs. So, uh, man, I really enjoyed this one. Go check it out. If you got some time, I haven't finished it. It has about, uh, it has a lot of songs on here. Yeah, it's a lot. What's it's the like name, 80, 83. <laughs> 83. <laughs> uh, Panata. Oh, it's okay. the deluxe edition. Um, I haven't finished it, of course, but of course. it's like a lot on here. Like a lot. Yeah. But hey. And, uh, but some of it is like instrumentals and then uh, remixes. And yeah, that's what it is. So it's like, you know, instrumentals the, and remixes. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you get to a certain point, you start seeing that it's like doubling the songs mm-hmm. and you'll figure out that one's the actual song and one's like the instrumental. So yeah. it's not as long, but. It's long enough, but yeah, but definitely go check it out. If you're a fan of Freddie Gibbs, you'll enjoy this. Um, man, after that, man, it was Watch the Throne. I don't know why I just felt like listening to Watch the Throne. I think it was something that G said, something about horns. And there's a song on here with uh, uh, Beyonce on it. Uh, let me see, Lift Off. Yep, oh, okay. and like I always love the beat on that one. Um, and man, it's Beyonce when she sings on the record. And you put her with Jay, it's like, I mean, I'm just saying. Magic. That's all I can You don't get no elf on nothing when it comes to them two. <laughs> uh, so it was it was amazing. So man, I, I definitely, that's one of my favorite albums. I got to see them in live one time too. It was great. Uh, well, I saw Beyonce in Jay Lab, but then I also went to the Watch the Throne tour as well. So mm. um Definitely, definitely pretty uh, uh, an experience that I'll forever, forever mem- remember. Uh, yo, that Corday song, What's Up, with featuring Young Thug, yeah. y'all rocking with it. I like it. I still it. haven't listened to that. Yeah, I like that record. Out, man. No, yeah, I man, check it out. The young um, music since I met him. Yeah. <laughs> you met Young Thug? <laughs> okay, so in Wait, a former... What? In a former life, <laughs> I used to um, sell jewelry to celebrities. So Young Thug was frequenting what? the establishment that I worked at. I met a lot of people. The Migos, Shannon Brown, Young Thug, Dominique Wilkins, Wait, what? Nelly. Where did you work at? Um, it's a jewelry store in the bucket. No Is it the reason. Icebox one? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Oh, that's one. That was it. Icebox. Yeah. yeah. That's what you said. Yeah, I used to work. Oh there. wow. Well, let me know. You were selling jewelry. Yeah. Yo, I need some. I need a charm for this new necklace. I, I don't guess. sell jewelry. Yeah, no. I was like, she was selling the most. Yeah. I oh, sold jewelry though know, for probably Shoot. from like 2010 until 20 like 15. So wow. I know a lot about jewelry. Why did you leave? Um. Well, at you, one establishment, I got robbed at gunpoint. Oh, so, that was the one with the whole okay. Yeah, that, that was wasn't an icebox though. But um I got gotcha. robbed at gunpoint at one establishment and icebox just wasn't a healthy re- uh, working relationship for me. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, we got to talk more about Jerry because I need to know. So when I go in these stores, oh I yeah, just I'm that I'm that to find a good deal. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Tell me, be like, no. Nah. They trying to overcharge you by a hundred percent. I'm be like, oh <laughs> damn, I'm I'm by a hundred percent. Are these folks ruthless out here when it comes to jewelry. Oh, they are. Uh, <laughs> jewelry is a is a, a game and you just have to know what you're getting. So mm-hmm. oh, I see. Yeah. We're gonna have to talk. Yeah. Uh, man, from there, NLE Chopper. Hey, I've been on this whole lemon pepper freestyle stuff. NLE Chopper dropped one. I didn't know he was locked up and he just got out. That was kind of interesting. I didn't know that either. Um I don't know who that is. And then <laughs> Meek dropped one as well. Yeah. Uh, well, no, NLE Chopper did beatbox. Sorry, that beatbox. You know, hey, man, knock your head out. You know, yeah. the whole dance thing. Uh, and then Meek did the lemon pepper freestyle. Um, and then I've been just kind of going down that whole lemon pepper freestyle uh, rabbit hole because I like the beat a lot. And um, yeah, that was a lot of lemon pepper going on. 
Which I want some lemon pepper wings. Yeah, we had some. So, uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it was a, it was a lot a lot of new records that I've been trying that I've been like spending a lot of those little singles there. Um, from there, I uh, Moray. Is it Moray or Murray? I, I still Moray, I think just be. I think it's Moray. Uh, yeah, Street Sermons, man, easy, fire all the way through. Uh, trenches. My son likes the song Trenches like a lot. Um, but I like like everything on here. Nothing now is probably the record that I mm. like played over and over again. Uh, and I also got to check out his um, Up Next on Apple Music. So if you're an Apple Music subscriber, check out the Up Next with uh, Moray. Uh, I think it was pretty cool and enlightening to get to kind of know him and where he's come from and all of that good stuff. So check that out, Street Sermon. Uh, pretty enjoyable. Uh, and then, yeah, DJ Khaled. Khaled. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't like this too much. Only like like a few songs off of there. Like uh, everything that features the baby. <laughs> not the baby, but little baby. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Sorry Not Sorry. Yo, yeah. can we just say that Hove, Hove and Nas, but Hove is just, yo, he still got it, man. Bro, uh, he just still got it. Like he never lost it. <laughs> never no, lost no, it. not at all. He, he just, it's Hove. Uh, not only that, I mean, Nas just kind of, Nas killing it as well. And I looked at the video, and it looked real cool just to see them two sitting there smiling. Uh, it was awesome. It was just an awesome song. Um, I hate all the Justin Bieber songs um, and the Justin Timberlake, but you know I don't rock with Justin Timberlake anyway, so yeah. um, I don't like any of that. Um, I did it. I did it. Is my record. I, I I'm gonna give props what props to do. Meg took off. Uh, yep. My homies were saying that was some mid from Meg though. I was <laughs> like, oh, I was surprised. But I, I'm actually gonna give Meg some props this week. Good job. Cardi B job was nice too, bro. You know what? It was you can tell it was rushed. Yeah. Cuz it just I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It just didn't grab me. Um uh, every chance I get Let let's just say, man, Lil Baby is Lil Baby is, is the best rapper out right now. I'm yeah. I'm just going. Can we can we agree on that? <laughs> he just is. Dude is smashing everything. Um it just he just smashing everything. It's just either. and then from there, I I too got on some old school, old school music. For some reason, yesterday I want to hear some uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. So mm-hmm. we was listening to September, and you know it's crazy. I didn't know it was called. I didn't know the name of it was September until I just <laughs> yesterday until I really looked at it. I thought yeah. it was Do You Remember, but it's it's titled September. September. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the 21st night in September I wanted that to be our wedding day mm-hmm. So that that could be the song mm-hmm. But it didn't fall on the right day of the week Nope, it was like a uh, Monday or Tuesday yeah. Or something like that Oh uh, yeah Yeah, that would have been dope Because then you forever remember it Yeah, Every time that song come on You felt yeah, like it was singing dance. Yep. Oh yeah yeah, so yeah, we thoroughly we yeah, enjoyed all that. So who to dance to it though? I dance with you, you to a dance. Not. Uh, I mean to whatever. What song do we dance to? Best know. of me. Yeah, we dance. So. See? You the best of me. Anyway, <laughs> see what else you got, man. <laughs> man, that's it. That's my okay. week. That's my week in speakers. <laughs> uh, yeah, I tried to throw that in there. I don't I know see why. what you did there. Um, yeah, you see what I did? See, I see, see what you did there. Uh, yeah, that's it for. I guess that's it for what's in your speakers. I hope we made G proud. Oh, uh, so when man. he comes back. Oh, so man. <laughs> <laughs> but from here, let's get with Tommy T and the T. All see, right, man. Tommy so T and the T. I don't got a lot of news, but I do have some. Actually, the one thing that I'm really, really uh, happy to bring up. And talk about mm-hmm. is Najee Harris. Um, he was last year. He was the running back for Alabama. This year, he got um, drafted as the twenty fourth pick in the draft in the NFL draft for the Steelers. Um, All right. One one reason I want to bring him up is because Najee Harris, growing up, um, used to live in like a homeless shelter for a few years, and before he got drafted. He went 
to that back to that homeless shelter and brought and had a basically a, and hosted a, a draft party, provided food for everybody and, and made donations to that um, homeless shelter. And, and it kind of um, dives back on to what we were talking about last week, Steve, in the sense mm-hmm. of like this was when we was off the off the uh you know we didn't record it or whatnot but in the sense of trying to figure out how to give back to your community um that you grew up in and seeing that hey he went back to this homeless shelter after he knows like basically he's set as long as he don't get hurt he's pretty good um Mm -hmm. and was able to give back in that way so it's like it's almost like a uh a chance to to um you know clap for him you know i'm saying i didn't watch the draft but i i just really thought that was a very um, good thing for him to do and everything. So I want to say front speaker geekers and the three M family, um, congratulations to Najee Harris and, uh, you know, hope good things come with you and the Steelers. Um, the next thing I want to bring up is I had it on my phone up here. Do, 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 um, the Oscars, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think his name is Anthony Hop- Hopkins. Yeah. yeah, one best actor. Um, he was up against uh, the only person I know that was in that category was Chadwick Boseman, and I'd never seen the movie that he uh he actually won it for. I think it's called The Father. He won it for, and um. Yeah, man. He in his acceptance speech, he was thoroughly surprised. Sent in the video and was like, "Yeah, this is a tribute to um, <laughs> Chadwick Boseman because he thought that Chadwick was winning it or had won it, and so he was just out and about playing golf wherever he was, man, just chilling. He was like completely surprised that he won that. So <laughs> <laughs> I just found it funny, man, because. Um, I know how you are, Steve, with the award shows and stuff, and you like to hell with all the award shows, especially the Grammys. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, not all of them. I'm just but the Grammys. <laughs> but um, yeah. this is this is a part of that. I feel like it's a, if you look at the award shows to people that we can award, this is a this is the Grammys for. Um, <laughs> Actors, actors, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, I just think it's commendable, man, that he did that. You know, seeing how much we lost in Chadwick Boseman because he's one of the like I was I was thinking about it earlier. Um, him and Michael B. Jordan is is probably two of the top actors now, and the fact that they're black men, man, is amazing. Mm-hmm. But. Um, um, some people would disagree with me, but I just watch with without remorse. Michael B. Jordan got it, man. <laughs> that that brother oh, yeah, can yeah. act. Yeah, he's been doing his thing for a long, for a time. long go, time. Go find him in like the old stuff. He was in the wire when he was. He was younger. in Hardball, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I had to go back and was like, that is him. <laughs> No, nah, I, uh, I think uh, you know that was that was really cool, um, and you know and surprising. I, and you know what, I like that because they didn't like just give it to right. Even though he expected him to win, they ain't just like right. You know, it'd have been questionable like, if it, he won that though. It, well, it'd have been questionable, but not because it's kind of like you'd be like, oh well. I get it. But <laughs> the fact that, you know, they gave it to someone and then, you know, he under him was pretty cool. So yeah. I'm good on that. Um, one more thing, man, and then we can get into it. Um, this is for people that just like Disney. Disneyland like actually opened this past week in California. I don't know which one is which. I don't know if Florida is Disneyland or Disney World, but one of them, the one that's in California opened up this past weekend it's been closed for a year now um so mm-hmm. the one in florida has always been open so disney world has disney been world open has they been just open. have been um yeah limiting the amount of people that can come in yeah so now disneyland is uh wide open now so that's big for california in that general. is huge for california yeah hopefully they, uh, they got a lot going on 
it seems like we are we are all getting back to normal, man, or trying to at least as as far as like because Georgia basically said, "All right, COVID's over." I don't think Georgia ever thought COVID like started. I think they were like, hey, yeah. we're just going to pause life for like a month and then y'all go back to normal. Georgia has been in denial. Yes. This the whole time. time. Yeah. Georgia and Florida. Florida yeah. too. I wanted yeah. to say, Florida is more in denial than Georgia is. Mm-hmm. Georgia was at least like some of the mayors were like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll wear masks. Florida was like, nah, <laughs> we got to beat Florida. <laughs> Florida got all the people that's talking about it's against my right to wear a mask. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. And then we're going to mention Texas. Oh. No, we ain't going to talk about Texas. <laughs> hey, we're going to over 100%. Okay. <laughs> no, we're going to shut it down, man, for a week. <laughs> While the and hospitals the are at 100% came. capacity, we are also going to be at 100% capacity wherever you want to go. Man, y'all know that's crazy, though. Like we have never heard of a hospital being at a hundred percent capacity. Right. Like you don't have room at the end for an emergency. Like that's crazy. But we live yep. through it, man. Yep. Fucking millennials. Yep. I think we're still living <laughs> through it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm tired of the millennial once in a lifetime things we've had. Like man, five we of had a we had, had a too many life, of them, man. The rough life. I'm stressed. Man. <laughs> We've seen it all. Oh, man. Well, we'll make it better for the next generation. Yeah, let's so, hope so. Yeah. We'll be smarter than all this in the- <laughs> before. <laughs> us. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, we're going to be way, man. way <laughs> smarter than them. We've seen this before, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, we, I was talking to a friend yesterday, man. It's crazy because, um, we went, we like went over, and the first thing we was like, "You got your shots?" Like we're like animals, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he got a shot, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So he's good, he got his shots, um, and stuff, man. It's crazy, like where we are as uh, human beings, man, and the the questions that we have to ask now, you know, yeah. and stuff. So, I mean, but is it really any different? Like, like people make a big whoop about vaccines but we've been been vaccined yeah, in order for you to go to elementary school you need to be vaccinated. I think only anti-vaxxers made a big deal about vaccines because the rest of us are just like okay the CDC says we need to get these I'm gonna get them. No. And like when we went through the list of vaccines for um for our daughter like with her pediatrician like we it wasn't mm-hmm. just a blind, we're just going to get everything, which we ended up getting, I think, every recommended vaccine except for one, which was flu, I, like a flu shot. And I was just like, I don't see the point because she's at home, not going anywhere. We're in the midst of a pandemic. Where is she going to get the flu from? So, yeah. um, but with that, we kind of like went and looked at all of them and talked through what each one of them did. And I'm like, ah, these are all like, there's a point. <laughs> yeah. Like I just yeah. I don't get the point of the anti-vaxxers, but you know, what I don't teach get, their own. What I don't get the point of is when people be like, "Well, what's in it, <laughs> nigga? I don't know what's in Tylenol, but I take it." <laughs> but even that, <laughs> like, what's in the I'm vaccine? What's in COVID? <laughs> right. Like, what is right. COVID? <laughs> I have no clue what this stuff is, man. <laughs> hey, I just, uh, my homeboy Fabe, he made a good point. He was like, people. They as they be like so up up uh, up in arms about what's in the vaccine, but they go to McDonald's and eat right that right. mystery meat and shit every right. day. <laughs> <laughs> like we put worse of stuff in our bodies. Like right. everybody get over it, right. do what you got to do. Because I mean, I got my first shot. <laughs> I go back May 18th for my second one. I got Pfizer. I'm part of Pfizer gang right now, y'all. Hey, me, um, me too. But me too. I think too. we all are. Yeah. Yeah, we're all fully vaccinated over here. Yeah. Yep. Steve, I got one more. <laughs> I'm on the way. I'm good to go. Um, but I've I've had COVID, so I don't know. Yeah, like it, they say, it's rare for someone to get it twice. But nevertheless, I had like a whole bunch of people in front of me who went and got it first, and my mom got Moderna. Uh, one of my homeboys got the Johnson and Johnson, and then everyone else got like Pfizer, and like yeah. everyone's fine. So, yeah. well, I've heard if you've like, had COVID before, it's better to get the Pfizer vaccine. I don't oh, know yeah. why, but they said it's it's better for people who've had COVID before. 
You no. need a medical oh, professional man. on to explain this to yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know that, so I'm glad I went and got Pfizer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I ain't know that either. My mom man. says, <laughs> "Hey, my mom says she went and got Moderna just because the Pfizer line was too long." Hey, bro, that's something she, I would do. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would do it too. I only um, had the one rule, which was I wasn't going to get the Johnson and Johnson shot, and the place that mm-hmm. we we chose only had Pfizer, so we yeah. didn't have another option. Option. It was just like no Johnson and Johnson. It was like Moderna or Pfizer, and they were like, "We got Pfizer." We were like, "We're in there. Tell us what time to yeah. be there." My mom got Johnson Johnson, so <laughs> she said she's been fine, man. No, uh, you know, just uh, the remnants of of getting a shot, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. that needle felt like it was still in my arm, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess it wasn't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but yeah, and my mom also knew the nurse, so that was getting yeah. it, so she felt more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And because it was someone she knew, so she could, you know, ask questions and all that. Yeah, but for sure, shoot, man, that's what I'm talking about. Mothers, you see that? We got two mothers on the show that told us good stuff yeah, about right. getting your vaccinations, <laughs> and then, as well as moms who are out there getting vaccinations. That's what's up. Lead the charge, and moms that's a good way to getting and giving roll. vaccinations. Yeah, yeah. Um, give it up for the moms. It's a good way yeah. to roll off in this. It's a, that's the that's the most beautiful way to roll off any man. Mother's Day, and we have Mother's Milk on the podcast mm-hmm. with us today. Like, dude, like before we get started, like we have like my wife, like since we've been doing this for like a year and a half now, almost a year and a half, maybe. Mm-hmm. Have we? Yeah, it's been, November was a year for you guys. Yeah, so, so yeah, about a year and a half. About a year and a half. This podcast and everything, and I've always wanted to get. Artika on the show because that's my wife and uh, I like working with her and then on top of everything it's like the cherry on top we got my cousin <laughs> <laughs> on here as well man and um, the cool thing about these two man is what a lot of people don't see is like our social media um, is pretty much ran by them too um the ideas for August love story, like Crystal is always called to say, Hey, we're, we're at a block and she'll come with a list of 20 topics for us <laughs> to talk about, to choose from. And it's like, ah, thanks. <laughs> you know? So it's like behind the scenes, these two work diligently with us to get, to help get things done um, with the three, within the three amp family. And of course they are on, let's discuss with us when, when they're like Steve said at the beginning, whenever we do record it, um, as well, but <laughs> it'll come back. It'll yeah. Come it, back. It's, we're going to record something, Eventually. but <laughs> <laughs> and the beauty of everything, we do recognize that they are the mothers, um, in our lives. They are, um, the mothers of our three amp family. Um, and everything and we wanted to celebrate them as well as celebrate their new podcast Mother's Milk um, won't you guys explain to us all about Mother's Milk and how we got <coughs> to this point well Mother's Milk was actually pitched to the two of us <laughs> by um, a person that's on this podcast who shall remain nameless <laughs> um, and essentially it's just Millennial moms talking about things that nobody told us about being a mom. Like, I think we started off talking about it actually started because we um, Crystal and I, though we're first cousins, we've actually also um, have shared the journey of breastfeeding at the same time. Um, We both felt like it was too long, but, you know. (laughs) Don't tell our kids that. Um, But we started off with Mother's Milk as a celebration of our journey of breastfeeding and all of the things that you don't get to find out about um, motherhood until you're like knee deep in it. Because as we've learned, our mother's journeys to motherhood was totally different from ours. I know, for an example, Crystal and I both, our grandmothers played a very instrumental part in our upbringing and our children don't have that. We are both currently six hours away from our kids' maternal grandmothers. Um, I know that her son's other grandmother lives close by and Tommy's mom lives a couple of hours away. So they're a little bit closer in proximity. But like we grew up at our grandmother's houses 
that was our primary caregiver and now we're trying to navigate what life is like mm-hmm. in that sense because we don't have the opportunity to just be like hey mom can you watch your grandkids <laughs> <laughs> And, and then add the on the layer of a pandemic and uh, oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. And I think, you know, there's so many mothers that can relate to our story. So many of us are going through motherhood without our mothers like in close proximity. So we've got to lean on each other. It definitely takes a village. I know that's cliche, but it really um does take a village. You need to have kind of your network. And we hope that our podcast will hopefully help um, mothers and fathers, you know, navigate this parenthood thing because it can be daunting, especially for new parents. So mm-hmm. hopefully we'll we'll be able to help people along the way. That's cool. Mother's milk, man. When the, mother's uh, milk. What's the what's the release date and everything? What's the release date again? It is going to be, I have to look at the exact date, but we are going to be releasing on May. I'm sorry, I don't have a calendar directly in front of me. I'm trying to pull it up. We are going to be releasing on May 10th. So that is Monday. So this comes out on Tuesday. So it'll be the following Monday after Mother's Day. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, Yeah, man, this is this is dope. Like I said before, man, Um, with Mother's Day coming up and I'm still trying to figure out like what to get all my mothers in my life. Sleep. (laughs) <laughs> sleep um, in a hotel by themselves <laughs> um, how has um, I guess I want to start with Mother's Day mm-hmm. you know like how has Mother's the meaning of Mother's Day changed for you guys and your thoughts on it now Um, I guess I won't say that I think that it has changed I think that I'm just now included Um, I've always thought that moms were special. Moms were amazing. And then to be on the side of actually like becoming a mother, like you realize all of the sacrifices and things that um, moms have to go through as far as like we look at it as um, pregnancy as sacrificing your body because you are like. I affectionately used to call Lily my little parasite because, you know, she made me sick all the time while I was pregnant with her. But like even beyond the actual pregnancy aspect of it, going into um, all of the things that you do, especially with breastfeeding, how you sacrifice your diet, you sacrifice um, sleep as the big thing for me. Um, You sacrifice all these things for your child. And it's just like it's a way to. Mother's Day to me is just a way to say, hey, I appreciate you for what you have done as far as bringing me into this world and being a guiding light for me as a child. And I actually, it's funny now that I am a mother, I call my mom and apologize a lot for things that I've done (laughs) in my life (laughs) because I see like what it's like having a child and I'm like, girl, how did you do this? Why did you do this? You did this twice. Why? <laughs> <laughs> she said, why? But yeah, that's that's kind of Mother's Day in a nutshell for me. It's just being able to honor and, you know, give thanks and gratitude for being the vessel that brought me here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, it's the same thing. Um, I had to do the same with apologizing to my mom, just like Artika did, because I had no idea. I, I'm an only child, so I would always question my mom growing up, like, why don't I have a brother or a sister? Now I see why. This is hard. You know, so I was like, now I understand, mom. I really do. But, I, you know, I think Mother's Day is an opportunity for us to show gratitude to the mothers um, out there, whether you give birth naturally or you are a mother figure. I think it's still important to celebrate those women who have, um, you know, been a mother figure as well. So I think it's, you know, a time for us to celebrate and also um, thank those women in our lives. It's very important. Especially, you know, I can now relate being a mother myself, all the sacrifices that come with um, being a parent. So definitely need to do that. Dope, dope stuff. Um, So I was sitting up here trying to figure out what Greg was talking about last week when we was talking about like planning for this uh, this interview Mm -hmm. with you guys and trying to relate it to music and everything like that. 
Um, the only thing I can think of is like what he came up with was like um, the story between um, artists and the songs they make for their moms. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest songs that I think of, um, and it make it's crazy. It makes me think of my uncle Tyrone <laughs> because this dude, I think he thought he was Tupac, but <laughs> but dear mama. It's the biggest song that I think of when I when I think about songs devoted or dedicated to moms. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just recently like looked up a playlist trying to prepare for this episode. Looked up a playlist of different songs about moms, and that's how I ended up listening to Drake. Um, Drake song. Um, what else? Boys to Men song. Um, the song they did. Hey, uh, what a is song it? for mama? A song for mama and stuff like that. But what are some of the songs that you guys think about and relate to more um, when it comes to moms and, and that was written for moms and uh, why? Chris, I'll let you go first. <laughs> I have first. one, but I'll let you go first. <laughs> we might even have the same one. You never know. Um, so no surprise here. This one is a song um, by Beyonce. It's actually to her daughter. Um, so it's kind of the reverse. The but reverse, yeah. Yeah. So this song is called Blue. And like the first few lines of the song are sometimes these walls seem to cave in on me. But when I look in your eyes, I feel alive. Some days we say words that don't mean a thing, but when you're holding me tight, I feel alive. Just that to me, I related back to those first few weeks of postpartum (laughs) only because, you know, you're kind of, you know, it's you and the baby and you're sleep deprived, but you feel alive despite, you know, what you're having to go through of trying to learn how to take care of a baby. And it's kind of, you know, like that she's saying, I'm balancing being a mom. But then when I look at my child, they give me life again. You know, I may be tired from being up all night, but I look at this child in this child, this child in their eyes and they give me, you know, a new life. So it's, you know, to me, those lyrics kind of resonate for me as a new mother and thinking back to that time when you're kind of just worn out and trying to figure out and navigate motherhood and just the blessing that it is. Um, so that's one of the songs that I kind of um, related to more. Oh, okay. So for me, I actually had this song as my mom's ringtone yeah. back in college, oh. <laughs> which was uh, Hey Mama by yeah. Kanye. Um, specifically, the lyric of it that I put in the ringtone was, I promise you I'm going back to school. <laughs> because I would come home every summer and in my mind I would quit college <laughs> and I was like I gotta like this is the agreement that we made was that I would finish so yeah. I promise I'm going back but it became like her ringtone um, probably the same year that the uh, album actually came out and it was her ringtone up until pretty much I got a new phone Cause, <laughs> yeah. and um, so that was just you know Kanye's ode to his mom of course um, like you mentioned the Boyz II Men song a song for mama I always think about that song when I think about the movie Soul Food mm-hmm. um, because uh, Big Mama was just everything for them but yeah Kanye's probably the the first one that comes to mind and then Boyz II Men being a close second mm. what about mm. you Steve <laughs> What no, my favorite mama song? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I mean, it's got to be Pac. I mean, yeah. I think it's just yeah. It's, it's just got to be Pac. That's just one of those songs. It's just. Nah, I, I don't know. It was so vivid. Like right. everything he said. <laughs> like it was just vivid. Like just there. So it, it's got to be that one. Uh, and then yeah, close second will be the boys, the man. But that one just so dang on sad. Right, so I don't listen to that one as much. <laughs> but no, nah, I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, what song? This is this is gonna be a little different because what song do you think really describes? Uh, well, two things. What song describes the roller coaster of motherhood, and that you think would describe it perfectly? And then what song describes your kids? <laughs> Because <laughs> for me, I think for Zoe, it would be like, like, uh, uh, shoot, 
roller coaster. <laughs> I was actually gonna throw that one out. Like one wrong. minute she up, <laughs> next minute she is. You're like, oh goodness yeah. gracious, it's good. Yeah. Right uh, but what what would y'all say? My child would be crazy by Gnarls Barkley. <laughs> like she she is like the most angelic child when she's around other people she's so sweet she's so loving like she saw her cousin um crystal son recently for the first time in like a year and like she gives him a hug and she gives him a kiss on the cheek and then on our way home she's like flipping out on us so it's like who was this little like where was the little angel that was with us like 30 minutes ago <laughs> like she's definitely oh, like she a child who, who flips and flops like Tommy and I call her a sour patch kid because she's definitely like <laughs> she's sweet and then she's sour yeah she's definitely That's a sour perfect. patch kid <laughs> <laughs> she's That's just kids, a little man. commercial that the, like bro she threw water on me yesterday and then gave me a hug <laughs> like for real why did she throw water on you like she was trying to get the glass was, and then give it to me and she did this is how she gave like this is the top of the glass to open this is how she yeah. gave it to me <laughs> oh, and then gave me a hug yeah, you want the glass <laughs> And like she'll yeah, like hit you with her tub was... if you don't give her water fast enough because she's gotten to the point now where we make her ask for things. Yeah. So like she'll mm -hmm. she'll like water and she'll like pass you her cup. And if you say give me a minute, she's like water. <laughs> and she like yeah. attacks you with her cup. There you go. <laughs> she wants and then she'll water. give you a kiss after you give her the water. And it's like almost like I'm sorry for being crazy. I yeah. just wanted water. <laughs> just wanted some water. That's it. Hey, that's the uh, the childhood uh, not understanding part. That right, <laughs> go yeah. Crystal. What, what you got? You mean, wait. All right. Um, I'm I'm trying to figure out. I'm over here looking at my Spotify playlist <laughs> of songs. Um, so I mean, here's the thing with Austin. He's very similar to Lily, and um, is a sour patch kid. One minute up, next minute down. I think that's just typical of a toddler. Um, but for me, here I go with another Beyonce reference. Mood Forever is his song that just, I mean, he's just a mood every time, you know, it's like good or bad. You know, I look at him, it's like, man, he's having the best time and I'll snap pictures of him. I look back, man, this is a whole mood right here. So, you know, that's one of the um, songs that kind of resonate. Um, and what was the other question? Oh, what was the song that you described? that you think perfectly describes at least your vision of, of what motherhood has been <laughs> up until this point. Ooh, that is a hard one. Um, I'm going to have to come back on that one, y'all. <laughs> it's so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure it out myself. Like, yeah, yeah I is. don't know. I don't know. That's a solid question, like, Steve. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's so many out there, but for me, I think... Uh, the big record where he talks about, you know, uh, uh, shoot, man, I just drew a blank. Was it Juicy? What you want to say, Genesis? When I was yeah, there, bro, yeah. you know, That's juicy. That, that, I kind of see that it one because it kind of goes through those. Yeah. Magazine. Salt and pepper. Man, that's my jam, bro. That's the, probably I mean, the only song I know with know the words to. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Such an iconic song. It is. Uh, but, you know, just kind of <laughs> that. And then, shoot, man, Sky's the Limit. I guess you can do like a hodgepodge of songs to kind of put all that together because you got to go through all of those emotions to get to where you're, you're at now. You look back at it and be like, dang, it really wasn't that bad. <laughs> or you look back at it and be like, dang, it was that bad, but we made it to here. Mm -hmm. Um because sometimes we go through whatever it is while we're young and we don't realize like, ah, yeah, this, that was pretty bad, but we was having so much fun uh, getting through it. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll let y'all think about that song because that's a tough one. <laughs> like, get back to me on that one. Yo, <laughs> so for everyone that's, everyone that's listening, uh, if y'all, drop y'all's down in the comments, whether your mother or father or, or, or your aunt, drop, drop what you 
what you think describes that whole mood or vibe or situation of being a mother? What song fits you? That's something for, for yeah, that's our call to action that week. Let me see them songs. Mm-hmm. See what you got. I'm right. sure people got a lot of different ones. Um, what you got, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I was I was gonna ask a little bit more about the podcast, man. Um, I know we we releasing here in a few weeks or next week, mm-hmm. actually on Monday. What are some of the things that you guys are actually gonna be talking about on there, or what what some of the things that people can actually look forward to um, discussing and and sparking the conversations with with you guys. So, um, definitely we talked about, um, we'll flip it from mom to dad. We did definitely talk about the dad's role in breastfeeding. Um, we talked about maintaining friendships as a new mom, because that's something that is very difficult for, um, for new moms. And we also kind of got into just talking about breastfeeding in general, like common misconceptions about it, Mm -hmm. because, um, that's actually what started the whole topic of the podcast is a lot of the things that we learned in the process of breastfeeding our child that we weren't able to reach out to another person about like, I, of course, had Crystal, who had been on that journey um, 16 months before I was. But like our mothers didn't breastfeed us. So it wasn't anything that we could like say, hey, mom, what happens when this happens? Because she doesn't have a vantage point about it. And so we were just kind of at the um, we were at well, Crystal more so than me. She was at the the um, the mercy of the Internet trying to look it up, trying to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if someone could be what Crystal was for me, if we could just do that for one other person, then we felt like, yeah, we've done our job as far as educating because at this point, like we're not lactation consultants. We're just moms that were able to successfully breastfeed and being able to explain to people the things that we've learned um, from a been there, done that mm-hmm. um, situation. Like it just, it felt like the right thing to do. Yeah. And we'll go deeper beyond breastfeeding, of course. But that was just kind of how yeah. everything started out. Like just learning that breast milk is like a cure for things. Uh, like, let me tell y'all, <laughs> Chris, I know that <laughs> I'm let you talk after this. But uh, like I, I, my skin was drying out on my face. Why did this woman try to put breast milk on my face and she was like it's gonna help it it's gonna help it it cures all did, did it not help did it, it help? I don't know if it did or not <laughs> say it did say it did Tommy it did what is, it's not there anymore right so I mean I still help. have dry patches, patches that's some, because from time you to time. are reluctant to continue using this the breast girl, milk this girl here man she was trying to put breast milk all on me man she's <laughs> like get off me <laughs> it's on me baby <laughs> <laughs> You know I got what? breast milk all on me. I sent my mom <laughs> home with breast milk um, from when she came to initially visit us when Lily was born because she had a spot on her foot and like literally like in three days it was gone and all she put on it was breast milk. Okay. And she was consistent oh. with it, right? Yes, so, she was consistent. I'm like, Tommy, she put some not. on every day for three days, and by the third day, it was done. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> that's so. That's so interesting. Uh, yeah. No, nah, I think I think what y'all guys gonna be definitely amazing because my my wife. Uh, so we, I have a son who's ten, and I have a daughter who's one. Um, so with him, he didn't breastfeed. She didn't breastfeed him. She tried to, but he didn't. Uh, he didn't really want to. I think it didn't last that long, uh, and it didn't really work out or whatever. But for her, she was actually she was my wife was very determined to breastfeed our daughter, which she did, and it worked out for about six months. I think she did it. Um. So, but hearing what you said and seeing what she had to go through to kind of figure out, all right, you know how do I get this to work this time and having to go through all the internet stuff and talk to the doctor and figure out the proper way to hold and all that. Now, I think that, I think, um, no, I think it's very important to kind of, to be, uh, I guess that source to help these, help these young mothers out, these up and coming mothers, whether they're young or older, because a lot of them need, yeah, that's, I don't know why that's so hard to, to, 
it's like really tough to find out how to you know all that information so I, no i think i think it's awesome I there's think it's a lot awesome. of misinformation about breastfeeding as well because um one of the big things that we realized which i was not a pumper because i worked from home but crystal was someone that had to pump because she worked outside mm-hmm. of the home up until this uh whole what do we call it now a panini, <laughs> a panini. <laughs> Um, up until that point, she was uh, working outside of the home. And one of the big things that we learned was that what you pump is not necessarily what you're producing. And so that's a huge misconception because people think that, um, OK, I'm only pumping half an ounce. My baby has to still be hungry. No, it's not that you're only pumping half an ounce. The baby is able to get more out of you because they are actually like made to do that. A pump is a man-made mm-hmm. version of that. And it's going to always be inefficient compared to a child. So when you look at it from that point, just like that one single misconception is something that can spiral and take you down a whole rabbit hole of things that are wrong. But in your mind, you're framing it as, oh, this is why my journey isn't isn't going the way that it's supposed to go. Nice. Yeah, there are just so many misconceptions out there around breastfeeding. And, you know, as a new mom and an older new mom, um, you know, I was just trying to find and navigate (laughs) good information. And I hope that our podcast will be able to provide that to, you know, moms, no matter the age or demographic, you know, you just need to find somebody you can relate to. And even if you take all the classes and, you know, try and prepare until you actually get in it and you're experiencing it, you know, it's kind of hard to connect what you may have learned in one of those breastfeeding classes prior to having the baby. So I'm hoping that this podcast will provide that kind of guidance and hopefully support to those moms who need it, even if you're not a new mother. I mean, sometimes you might be a mom who have, you know, didn't have a kid for several years and you're trying to get back into Mm -hmm. it. So even second and third time moms could benefit um, from our podcast because we'll cover the gamut. So I'm just so excited and really excited to work with my cousins on this. Just um, it's definitely a labor of love. So we are um, definitely looking forward to the release date. For nice hey, show. Did, did y'all ever For have sure. some of those uh, um, those what, what they call those those breast milk snacks? The little the, like the lactation uh, cookies and stuff. Yeah, those things. Yeah, I never so I purchased them. some, but <laughs> I never. It came in like one of the little. I guess bags that you have to actually make the batter and all that. I didn't have time for it, so I never tried it. But I did try the lactation tea. I will have to say, I think it worked, mm-hmm. but you know, everybody's different, but I think it, it did work for those times. I was like, you know what? I need a little boost. So what's, what's the lactation tea for? To help you produce milk. It's supposed to, um, for lack of better words, revitalize your milk ducts <laughs> and make production increase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what's in it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, I didn't think it, it's herbs. It's like milk thistle is an herb that's in it, and I can't remember the others. But uh, it's um, fen- what is it? Fenugreek. Fenugre- Fenugre- well, the one I had didn't have fenugreek in it, but some of them do. Some formulas do. Yeah. Um. Mm. So yeah, it's a mix of different herbs. Oh, okay. But I mean, you know, we we'll, we touch on this in the podcast, but the best way to get your your um, milk to produce is to nurse or pump. So mm-hmm. you got to move milk to, milk make, to make the milk. milk. That was ingrained. <laughs> got to move and that's not something milk. that we came up with. This is like <laughs> internet. <laughs> right. But you do have to move milk to make milk. You have to get it out of your body for your body to signal to make more. Yeah. Okay. That well, actually makes sense. I almost I, ate one of those those lactation cookies one time. Did you? Uh, I don't think it would. I think my wife still got one in the freezer right now. And sometimes I get a sweet tooth. I'm like, oh, that's a cookie. And I look at it like, oh, this is one of those cookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of those cookies. Yeah. It's just there now. Now I'm like, sure, we got to throw this stuff away. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh so, man. Um. I, I really don't have any more questions for y'all, but I do want to say um, I'm really proud of you guys. I'm really happy for you guys. Um, I pray for you guys, uh, the success in this podcast and in, in this you. journey. Thank you, Deacon T. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, no, it's, it's, it's like you have to you have to look at it from a 
from like you have to see it from my side because yeah I asked you guys about it mm-hmm. but you guys have taken this thing this idea mm-hmm. and really have blossomed it into something that I never thought about it I just thought it would be pretty cool like we have speaker geekers Mm -hmm. we have August love story we're doing let's discuss okay you guys work behind the scenes how about you guys have your own little thing and 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 you're able to go down your own avenue and it's it's like I'm happy for you guys Mm -hmm. and and actually proud of you guys of how you guys working and and everything like that and glad to be a part of it you know so um (laughs) Kudos to you guys as well. Um, Steve, did you have anything else? Um, the only thing I did have is something that uh, we were talking about misconceptions. And this, this kind of brings, uh, it brought something to mind that I think we was researching when we was going through the whole uh, breastfeeding thing. And I think I came across that cow milk, the milk that we actually get from cows are actually bad for us. Like it's really not it's not good and someone explained it to me as to like uh, you know if you ever look at you know saying animals and how you know like dogs you know get their nutrients from the mother cows other cows get their nutrients from other cows and it was like we're the only people that get our nutrients you know like our, our milk from another you know what I'm saying from an animal and someone was saying that's why you know, breastfeeding is so important because really that is what we're supposed to be doing. So, uh, did y'all come across any of that when doing your research as far as, uh, you know, saying for mother's milk or, you know, at the time that y'all breastfeeding? Yeah, for me, um, you know, I was really looking at the nutritional side of it. You know, I saw that the benefits of breastfeeding from just, you know, health and getting um, protecting my son from any type of illness was really important. So I was definitely in tune in doing the research around the health benefits of breast milk. And, um, you know, my son, he currently still is not drinking cow's milk. He's drinking pea protein milk and other types of milk. So when you look at the benefits, you know, there's so many issues, which I won't even get into with cow's milk. I personally, you know, still partake in milk products myself, but my son has not. Um, but when you're looking at it holistically and, you know, like you had mentioned, we're the only mammals that are drinking a, a um, I guess you would say another mammal's milk. That's not really mm-hmm. what we should be doing. Um, it's the most healthy thing is, you know, for our children to drink human breast milk. So, you know, we are, um, I think as parents, we just got to do our research and do what is best, um, you know, for our children. But I think that, you know, looking at it holistically from a health perspective, you just have to start there and figure out what's best for you. Nice. Oh, absolutely. I um when I was doing the research about everything, it just made sense to breastfeed because a do- like as you said Steve, a dog drinks milk from its mother. A cow drinks milk from its mother. I don't understand why we as human beings don't think that we should drink milk from our mother. So for that like going in and doing the research and looking at the benefits of everything and then also taking uh Tommy's approach to it the financial side of it um breast milk is free they give you a pump yeah. if you have insurance um and with that pump the only thing that you have to pay for is bags which bags are a lot less expensive than buying actual cans of formula so when you look at it from that standpoint of it's free um the the accessories that you need for it are very inexpensive. And then on top of that, it is milk that is made for your child. Like um, one of the things that I learned in my research was that breast milk changes when a child gets sick. So to be able to fight, mm. like it creates antibodies to be able to fight illnesses for the child. So like if your baby comes and gets a cold and then they nurse, like your body makes the milk to change so that it can help fight that infection. So for me, it's like, oh, I also don't have to spend money on medicine. I'm not going to the doctor to check out on things because they're like fairly healthy. Like at this point, Lily has only had one cold her entire life and she's um, 
20 months at this point. And that cold was literally a byproduct of a whole lot of changing of weather at the time that we were traveling as well. So she got sick in the, um, in the, the transition of all of that. But outside of that, like she's, a very healthy child like she's only been sick once um the only thing that we can think of that is actually ever like that is wrong with her currently is that she has allergies and that's just not something that breast milk can change so like I mm-hmm. I think that we made the right decision to breastfeed and I know Tommy thinks we made the right decision because he didn't have to go out and buy milk yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no argument there. So I have a quick story time if y'all don't mind. No, sure. go for it, man. Go for it. So Artika, you may not remember this, but as kids, you know, I spent a lot of time over at grandparents' house. Mm-hmm. And Artika's dad had a Doberman um dog as a you know as a pet. Doberman had puppies. I that, remember you don't remember this? Okay, so <laughs> The dog had puppies and she had nothing. She didn't want to have anything to do with her puppies. She refused to feed her puppies. So me and my mom had to take the puppies to the vet and they were like, well, the only thing you can do is put them on formula. And they were like, there's a you know 50-50 chance that they're going to survive on formula alone. They really need their mother's milk. And we, you know, got the formula. We fed them probably for several weeks. And this is kind of sad. Um, they ended up passing away like after three or four weeks. Of course, this would not happen with a human, but I'm just saying, look at the health benefits, even from a dog's perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, she refused to breastfeed her um, puppies and then we had to give that formula and the puppies just Mm -hmm. didn't thrive, unfortunately. And it could have been for other reasons as well, but that made me think about, you know, oh, you know, even with a dog, they really need that mother's milk as well. But that was just a story I wanted to throw out there. We all that's have a cool story. <laughs> oh no, we no, keep that's that. cool. I never, I never even, yeah, I never even thought about. I'm like, sad that I don't importance. remember my dad having a dog. <laughs> you don't remember Nikki and Prince? The two dogs. I remember their names, but I do not remember these. Dogs. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, Nikki had puppies, and they were. I think it was three puppies. Yeah. And me and my mom tried to nurse them back to life yeah. with the, the formula milk. I'm going to have a call and say, why didn't you take care of your dogs? You just let them know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that they be, were cute that, dogs, too. They were so cute. Hey, that, that should be that that should be the official story. Be like, how y'all come up with mother's milk? Well, there was two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they needed their mother's milk. They did. <laughs> My puppy milk. siblings, apparently. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. right. You know what? You might not have been born then. Now I think about it. Because, you know, we're five years apart. I think I was probably like four when that happened. I don't know why I remember all of this so vividly. Like, I remember him having dogs, but I don't remember the dogs. Yeah. I remember him having cats, which is weird that my dog had, my dad has a cat. So. Yeah, he loves cats too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, sir. <laughs> Not I, sir. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's wild. That's a wild story. Yeah, like I, I never knew like the importance of breast milk and uh, a mother's milk um, until we had a baby and, you know, well, actually, I found out before that, but um, <laughs> until a baby was actually in my life and somebody was um, actually breastfeeding, I uh, didn't know, mm-hmm. you know, the importance of it. But um, yeah, man, Mother's Milk. Where where can we find all the information we need to listen to Mother's Milk? Um, do you guys have a website, email, and all that good good jazz? Absolutely. So our website is mothersmilktheshow.com. Um, we're on Instagram at Mother's Milk the Show. And you can email us at support at Mother's Milk the Show if there's anything that you want us to talk about or um, any sponsorship questions, concerns, things of that nature. Um, everything kind of feeds into that inbox and then we will respond accordingly. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I want to remind everybody too, we also have a listener letters portion of the podcast called Milkshake and um, we'll be taking <laughs> listener letters as well. Oh yeah, Milkshake gets wild. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of interesting topics. You should. You should. It's Sunday. 
Oh man. Um okay, so well cool, right man. Is there anything else you guys want to say about the episode before we get on out of here? No, just please listen, share it with friends. Um, it comes out next week and you know, we're celebrating Mother's Day with the release. So come listen, share with friends, go on the website, tell us what you think. Rate it on all of the um podcasts. What is it? Services? Yeah. Wherever you listen to I, podcasts. I change that every time I say it. So. I, I never remember because you're always the one that says yeah. that. So I never think about that part of it. But definitely um, Apple Podcasts, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Google Podcasts, yeah. Spotify, all those things. We are on all of those. So definitely look around, like rate it share it with friends tell us what you thought like we're always open to feedback and like this has been a fun journey of recording these first few episodes yeah it has thanks production yeah thanks production (laughs) (laughs) no problem (laughs) that's dope man well there you have it guys Uh, I want to again thank you for joining us at Speaker Geekers Mother's Milk. Um, Also, thank you guys for listening to another episode of Speaker Geekers Podcast. Um, If you haven't already, please go subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as subscribe to the podcast audio as well. Wherever you listen to podcasts, be it Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Deezer, wherever you listen to it, look up Speaker Geekers Podcast and subscribe there. Um, You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Speaker Geekers Podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at I am Tommy T the third. You got Steve at the great Steve O Steve and you got G at instantly underscore G um, as well as as Mother's Milk. You can follow them. Just say it one more time for me. Mother's Milk the show dot com. All right. And what's the what's the Instagram? What's you guys is Instagrams and um, Mother's Milk Instagram is Mother's Milk the show or at Mother's Milk the show. My Instagram is at Artika. And you can just follow me through Mother's Milk the show on Instagram as well. There it is. Um, Steve, you got anything? Did I miss anything? Hey, at what age can you not drink, you know, <laughs> Mother's Milk? Does anybody know that? You can drink it indefinitely. So weird story. Once again, (laughs) there are um, bodybuilders who actually pay like good money for women who are lactating to provide them with milk because it helps strengthen their muscles um, better than like cow's milk would. So you can drink it indefinitely. I have a personal cutoff, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. I mean, like (laughs) what they do has nothing to do with me, but um like you can drink breast milk as long as you want. Like I believe the CDC says like six months to a year um, mm-hmm. is their preferred time frame when you have a new baby. But I've seen people who are like nursing three and four year olds. I didn't want that for my life. No. Thank God my child also did not want it for her life. <laughs> like she quit <laughs> just before she hit a year and a half. So mm-hmm. and she just like decided she was done with me. So I was cool with that. Yeah. Gotcha. Hey, Tommy, let's go get some breast milk. I don't put them in our milkshakes, bro. I've I've tasted it by mistake, and yeah, it's It's not bad. It's it's not for me. (laughs) 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 Well, to all the mothers out there, Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Man, keep keep mothering, keep mothering. Yeah, so yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I want to thank you guys again for joining us on this podcast. Uh, much great success to you guys with your new podcast and everything. And uh, look forward to hearing all this good news about mothers and motherhood and breast milk and breastfeeding and all that good stuff. Um, but anyway, guys, I'm out. Peace. Bye. Peace. Bye.